Hi and welcome back. Today we are talking about sunscreen. And I know sunscreen is not the most exciting skincare item, but it is definitely the most important. Not only can regular use of sunscreen help protect us from developing skin cancer, but it can also help protect us from premature aging caused by UV radiation. In fact, up to 90% of visible skin changes commonly attributed to aging are caused by the sun. So again, while sunscreen is not the most exciting skincare item, it is definitely the most important. And sunscreen has come a long way. There are so many beautiful sunscreen formulations available on the market now that I'm going to have to break this yearly sunscreen review video into two, if not three parts. And as always, this yearly sunscreen review video, and that's a mouthful, is in collaboration with my beautiful friend Tamara from Tamara's Timeless Beauty. Tamara and I like to collaborate on these videos because it allows us to test more sunscreens. And Tamara can also tell us how some of these SPFs perform under makeup. Now, most of you already know and love Tamara, but if you don't, make sure to check out her channel. Tamara has a very well-rounded channel covering anything from skincare, skincare devices, makeup, supplements, and while living. And Tamara being a retired nurse, her knowledge of the body and while living runs quite deep. So as I just mentioned, sunscreens have come a long way, especially here in Europe, Asia, and some other parts of the world, where new and advanced filters are being used to create some gorgeous formulations. In the United States, where sunscreen is regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, getting a new sun filter approved is somewhat of a slow process. In fact, the last sun filter was approved in the US in 1999, 24 years ago. Now, this has nothing to do with the safety or efficacy of these new filters being used. But unlike the United States, where sunscreen is considered an over-the-counter drug, in other parts of the world, sunscreen is considered a cosmetic ingredient or cosmetic item, which makes it much easier for formulators to use and combine sunscreens without restrictions. Now, if you want me to make a whole separate video on European sunscreens, I would be happy to do so. Just let me know down below. But in today's video, we are going to be focusing on Korean sunscreens, of which I have accumulated a whole basket full. Between Tamara and myself, we tested quite a few Korean sunscreens, but we narrowed it down to reviewing 14 of them. And it was not easy to narrow it down to 14, since there are so many beautiful, as well as inexpensive, Korean sunscreens available. Now, before we talk about these seven, really eight, I tested, let's briefly talk about what the number on your sunscreen bottle actually means. So SPF, of course, stands for Sun Protection Factor. In the United States, when it says that your sunscreen has an SPF of 50, this only refers to UVB protection. Both UVB as well as UVA rays can cause skin cancer but UVB rays cause burning, UVA rays cause aging. So in the United States, when it says your SPF is an SPF of 50, that means you can stay in the sun 50 times as long as you could without using sunscreen before you burn. It says nothing about UVA protection. So to make sure we have UVB as well as UVA protection, we want to make sure that somewhere on our sunscreen it says broad spectrum protection filter or broad spectrum sunscreen. Now in the United States, there are only two broad spectrum protection filters available, zinc oxide and avabenzone. In Korea, the PA index, which stands for protection grade of UVA, measures the ability of a sunscreen to protect from UVA rays. So on Korean sunscreens, you will see a number and this number, just like in the United States, refers to UVB protection. So this one right here has a UVB protection of 50, and then it has a PA rating of 
4 pluses, which offers extremely high UVA protection. A PA rating of 1 plus offers some UVA protection. 2 pluses offer moderate protection. A PA rating of 3 pluses offers high UVA protection. And again, a PA rating of 4 pluses offers extremely high UVA protection. So when purchasing Korean sunscreen, you want to first of all look at the SPF number right here. So this has an SPF of 50. So with this sunscreen, I can stay in the sun 50 times longer than I could without using sunscreen before I burn. And then you also want to make sure to look for a PA rating. So this one right here has a PA rating of four pluses, which again is extremely high UVA protection, the highest you can get. So let's take a look at the eight sunscreens I have tested. Really, I tested more, but these are the eight I am reviewing. Six of them I love, one of them is so-so, and one of them I did not like. Let's start with the one I love the most and have repurchased the most. And it is this one right here by Beauty of Joseon. This is the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice and Probiotic SPF 50 with a PA rating of 4 pluses. 50 ml or 1.69 ounces sells for around $12. This contains 30% rice extract, which can be very hydrating and soothing. It also contains lactobacillus ferment and niacinamide. This uses two hybrid and two chemical filters. And a hybrid filter acts as both, a chemical as well as a physical sun filter. The first hybrid filter it uses is Juvenal T150, which offers UVB as well as UVA2 protection. It also uses Tinosorb M, another hybrid filter, and a broad spectrum protection filter, Juvenal A, a UVA filter, and Isocotrizinol, which is super photostable and loses only 10% of its SPF protection after 25 hours. Isocotrizinol is a UVB as well as UVA2 filter. And with all of these sunscreens, I am applying two finger length full of product to my face and neck, which according to this article in the British Medical Journal is enough to ensure adequate protection. This one is gorgeous. It is extremely hydrating. So if you are on the oily side, you might not need a moisturizer. I do apply this over a moisturizer because my skin is somewhat dry, but this is really hydrating. It sinks right in, leaves you with a beautiful glow. This does not irritate my eyes. It does not irritate my somewhat sensitive skin. In fact, I have used this the day after medical microneedling, which normally I only use zinc oxide. And it did not sting my skin. It didn't irritate my skin. I've also used this when I went into a sauna and I sweated profusely. This didn't run into my eyes. It didn't sting my eyes. And this is gorgeous. I have repurchased this probably five or six times. This also reapplies beautifully. So I can put layers and layers of this onto my face. There is no white cast. There is no pilling. It doesn't irritate my skin. I don't know how this performs under makeup, but I would think beautifully. So this is still my favorite Korean SPF. However, this one is a <laughs> close second right here. This is the Tokobo Bio Watery Sun Cream SPF of 50 and it has a PA rating of 4 pluses. 50 ml or 1.69 ounces sells for around $12. This contains aloe vera extract, cocoma extract and a bunch of other beautiful plant and flower extracts. It uses one hybrid and three chemical filters. The hybrid filter again is the Juvenal T150. And Juvenal T150 has the highest photostable absorption of all available UVB filters. It also uses Juvenal A+, which offers very high UVA protection as well as high photostability. Mexoril SX 
another UVA filter and polysilicon 15, a UVB filter. This one is extremely light. It feels like water. In fact, when I first got this, I was so amazed how light it felt and how quickly it sunk in that I ran to show my husband he was not interested. But this, like I said, it feels like water. It sinks in so fast, does not leave a white cast, doesn't irritate my somewhat reactive skin, nor my eyes, though there is a bit of a scent to this one. It's pleasant, it smells like flowers, but there is a scent which does not irritate my eyes. This one does not have a scent. This one is less hydrating. It is quite hydrating, but less hydrating than this one. And it doesn't give you the same glow as this one does. So if you're looking for a really light SPF, a gorgeous SPF that doesn't leave you quite as glowy, this one might be for you. It's gorgeous. Next, we have the Dear Claire's. This is the Dear Claire's All Day Sunscreen. It has an SPF of 50 plus and a PA rating of 4 pluses. 50 ml or 1.69 ounces sells for around $15. This contains niacinamide as well as glycerin and it is water based. So this might be really good if you have acne prone skin. It uses one hybrid and three chemical filters. The hybrid filter again being Uvenol T150 it also uses Uvenol A+, a UVA filter, polysilicone 15, a UVB filter, and Tinosorb S, a broad spectrum protection filter known as the best sun filter currently available. This sunscreen, as well as the beauty of Joseon, have actually been tested by two different labs to verify their SPF ratings. Now this says that it is a water-based gel texture. But to me, this feels like a lotion, not a gel. However, it sinks in beautifully, does not leave a white cast, doesn't irritate my somewhat reactive skin, nor my eyes. It leaves you with a beautiful glow. There is no scent to this one. And I would say as far as finish, it is quite similar to the beauty of Joseon. So this one is also quite glowy. Not as hydrating maybe than this one, but pretty close. So this one is also a gorgeous one. And like I said, this might be a good choice if you are prone to breakouts or have acne prone skin, since this is water-based. Next, we have the Make Brem. This is the UV Defense Me Daily Sun Essence. It has an SPF of 50 and a PA rating of four pluses. 50 ml or 1.69 ounces sells for around $15. This contains glycerin, moringa seed extract, and some other beautiful antioxidants. It uses one physical, one hybrid, and two chemical filters. The physical filter is titanium dioxide. The hybrid filter is Uvenol T150, a UVB filter, and then it also uses Uvenol A+, a UVA filter, and iscotritzenol, a UVB and UVA2 filter. This one is also gorgeous. It feels quite similar to the beauty of Joseon. It does not contain the rice extract or lactobacillus ferment the beauty of Joseon contains, but as far as feel and finish, this is quite similar. It sinks in nicely, does not leave a white cast, and doesn't irritate my somewhat reactive skin, nor my eyes. There is no scent to this one. And again, it feels quite similar to the beauty of Joseon. It also leaves you with a similar glow. It's quite hydrating. These two are very comparable. I would say this one is maybe a bit better for sensitive or reactive skin. Like I said, I have used this the day after medical microneedling, and normally my skin is super sensitive and all I can use is zinc oxide, but I didn't have any, so I used this and I didn't react. So while they are quite similar, if you have really sensitive skin, I would say this one is still better, but this one is also beautiful. Next we have Mary and May. 
This is the Sika Soothing Sun Cream. It has an SPF of 50 and a PA rating of 4 pluses. The reason I wanted to try this one is because it does contain Sika or Centella Asiatica, which can be quite soothing as well as hydrating. 50 ml or 1.69 ounces sells for $10. On top of the Centella Asiatica, this also contains niacinamide and glycerin. It uses two chemical and two hybrid filters. The hybrid filters again being Juvenal T150 for UVB protection and Tinosorb M for broad spectrum protection. It also uses Juvenal A+, a UVA filter, and Iscotrizinol, a UVB filter which also covers UVA2 rays. It does say on here that this is good for sensitive skin and this does have quite high amounts of Centella Asiatica or Sika, which again can be quite calming. But while this is a beautiful SPF and there's nothing wrong with it, I don't like it quite as much as some of these other ones I just shared with you. It does, however, sink in beautifully. Again, it does not leave a white cast and doesn't irritate my eyes, nor my somewhat sensitive skin. There is no scent to this one. So this is a beautiful SPF. It leaves you with a nice glow. But like I said, for some reason though, there is nothing wrong with this one. I don't like it quite as much as some of these other ones I just shared with you. Next we have the Skin 1004. And this is the Madagascar Centella. It has an SPF of 50 with a PA rating of 4 pluses. This also contains Centella Asiatica. 50 ml or 1.69 ounces sells for $10. On top of the Centella Asiatica, this also contains hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, green tea, and some other antioxidants. It uses two chemical and two hybrid filters. The hybrid filters again being Juvenal T150, a UVB filter, and Tinosorb M, a broad spectrum protection filter. It also uses Juvenal A+, which offers very high UVA protection, and Iscotrizinol, a UVB filter. So this is another gorgeous SPF. And as far as SPFs containing Centella Asiatica, I do prefer this one over this one. Again, there's nothing wrong with this one, but I tend to reach for this one more than this one. This again sinks in beautifully, and this is becoming somewhat repetitive. It does not leave a white cast, doesn't irritate my eyes, nor my somewhat reactive skin. It does leave you with a gorgeous glow. So this is just another really gorgeous SPF and one I actually have repurchased. Now let's talk about one that is so-so. And this one is by Thank You Pharma. Thank You Pharma actually has several different sunscreen formulations. This one is the Shimmer Sun Essence. It has an SPF of 30 and a PA rating of 2 pluses. 40 ml sells for around $16. This one uses four different chemical filters, Octinoxate, which is actually available in the United States, and it is a UVB filter, Octisalate, another UVB filter, Amiloxate, another UVB filter, and Juvenal A+, a UVA filter. So this only contains one UVA filter. I saw one of my YouTube friends talk about this and I was intrigued. And while this is a gorgeous SPF, it has a bit of a shimmer, which really just translates to a gorgeous glow. However, this one is oh, so heavily fragranced that it irritates my eyes. I cannot use this on my face. I have been using this on my body, but the fragrance is not really very pleasant. It kind of smells like old lady perfume. So this is one, though it does look gorgeous, this is one I will not repurchase. It also doesn't give you the greatest UVA protection. So this one I will not repurchase. And then lastly, I have one I definitely won't repurchase. And it is this one right here. This is the 365 Tune-Up. And I'm not quite sure what brand this is from. I will put it right here. 
but 50 ml retail for around $19. The reason I was curious about this one, this is a hybrid SPF. It contains zinc oxide as well as titanium dioxide and also two chemical filters. So this is a hybrid and it is tinted. However, as you can see, the tint is very pink and it reminds me of applying chamomile lotion. It also leaves a very matte and pink finish and I really prefer a glowy finish. This was also marketed towards sensitive skin. However, I could not even leave this on my skin. It didn't really irritate my skin, but it really irritated my eyes. So this is one I will not repurchase. I won't even use this one up. So I hope this video was helpful. I would love to know, do you use Korean sunscreens? And if so, what are some of your favorites? Please share down below. Any questions or comments, of course, share them down below. You know, I always love to hear from you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, all of these sunscreens I just shared, with the exception of the Thank You Pharma Shimmer Essence, are reef safe, which is great to know. Now, don't forget to head over to Tamara's and check out her video. Like I said, if you don't know Tamara, I know you will love her. Say hi to her and make sure to subscribe to her channel. Thank you so, so much for being here. Until next time, bye.